I'm William Harwin, I'm Director of Research at the school. What I'm here to do is try and facilitate and enable internationally leading research at the school. Being involved in new ideas, new research, means that if there's something out there, a new idea, a new way of doing things, it goes into the courses really quickly. Within days of an international discovery being made, it can be in the course and being taught to our undergraduates. So it really keeps the courses very current. We have research opportunities, which can be anything from finding a project to a summer placement, uh, where you're actually embedded in the research group and there's a good chance that you'll come up with an idea, come up with a discovery that only you will know about. And there's something quite exciting about being the only person in the world to know something new. Projects are a, a key, important part of our degrees. Many of them are actually tied in with research that's going on in the school. If you're doing an MEng degree course, then you get to do a group project and can work on things like the Flying Brain, which is a, an autonomous flying vehicle for applications such as search and rescue, um, surveillance sorts of applications. I'm doing research in brain-computer interfaces where you can record signals from human brain and try to control other devices like computers and robots using your thoughts. The human-computer interfacing, um, one of the doctorate students is doing at the moment with contactless responses to the, what the human body is going through. It is really interesting how technology has improved in the last few years. My name's Dr. Max Parfit. I've been at the University of Reading for 10 years. I started off as an undergraduate here and I've continued on through my PhD and I now lecture in robotic systems and virtual reality. What you can see behind me here is the CAVE system, which is the Collaborative Virtual Environment, and this allows my students to come in, develop their own 3D models, games, interfaces, and then test them in full 3D at a one-to-one -one scale so they can physically stand within their simulation. Now, this simulation behind me that the students are interacting with is a fear simulator, in this case arachnophobia, and this allows us to change different triggers to try and bring a person's confidence up with spiders. We can also use it for visualising construction sites, uh, we can go through virtual models of the brain. We've had surgeons in here in the past planning out their surgeries before uh, they actually step into the operating theatre. Uh, this uh, is available to my students, they come and use this as part of their practical projects and uh, they're able to interact in many different ways and create their own systems. They can discuss and interact in ways that aren't possible using other technologies. 